Hello, and you're very welcome to our CAP1 uh, Meet the Team uh, video, uh, which we're, we're delighted to, to present today. This, the purpose of this, is a brief introduction uh, to all things CAP1 to help you get started on the, the right foot. My name is Brian Rankin. I'm Head of Student Operations with Chartered Accountants Ireland. And uh, I'm delighted to welcome you to, to this, perhaps your first uh, personal interaction with Chartered Accountants Ireland, no doubt the first of very many through your, through your career. Uh, hopefully over the next round about 45 minutes or so, um, we hope to share with you what we think are the key points of, of information to help you to have a very successful year year ahead and the start of your professional journey of education with us. Uh, what we're going to try to do is to answer the most common, the most frequent questions that, that we uh, we think are going to arise and even hopefully trying to anticipate the questions that you mightn't even uh, know that you have yet and, uh, and respond uh, to those questions. What we're going to do now is just introduce you to the team, to the Institute team, who you're going to be working with and who we hope uh, who is going to be supporting you and assisting you through the, the, the academic year. As I say, my name is Brian Rankin. Hi, my name is Laura Gore and I'm the Student Services Executive for Northern Ireland and I look forward to assisting you throughout your studies for this academic year. Hi, my name is Laurence Prévost and I'm the uh, coordinator for CAP1. So as the student executive, I'll be here to answer your questions on all things relating to course delivery. Hello, I'm Leon Harris and I'm Head of Education Delivery and Head of Faculty and I'm looking forward to chatting today about how to succeed in online learning. Hi, my name is Shane Brick. I run the Learning Hub, so we'll be chatting very briefly about the Learning Hub and webinars itself in this call. Hi everyone, I'm Gareth Mullivan, I work in the exam department and looking forward to giving you a brief overview of your CAP1 exams and some basic tips to ensuring you're successful in those exams come May 2023. Thank you very much indeed, uh, team. So as I said, um, I think support is a key theme of the, the presentation and the video that we're going to produce today. Um, so in order to flag all the ways that we're hoping to assist you and support you in a very practical way uh, throughout this academic year. Um, we start, as I say, by welcoming you, which is really important to, uh, to, to this year, uh, as you embark on your career in accountancy with us. We can't always promise that it's going to be easy, but we, what we can stand over is that it will be satisfying, rewarding, uh, and a year of great achievement where you'll make lifelong friends and wonderful memories. We're here to assist you and help you in that journey. And maybe just to illustrate that point of, of the journey, what happens at this time of year is actually quite interesting as we welcome uh, our new intake of CAP1 students. Round about the same time, and Gareth will know this, around about the same time we actually also release the results of our uh, final year students, our FAE students, and they'll get released around about that th this time of year, maybe in, in, in the weeks to come. And that really bookends this and illustrates the journey that you're on because that release of FAE uh, results is enormously important um, for, for students as they progress through their career and hopefully progress from, from a student of Chartered Accountants into, into uh, full membership with all the opportunities both at home uh, and, and across the world that that will afford. So. Just to, to, to use that, I think, uh, we, if we can advise you to use that uh, as a motivational point for you to keep focused on the end goal here, which is to get through CAP 1, but also to qualify as a chartered accountant and all the opportunities uh, that that affords, um, opening up, uh, as I say, worlds of opportunity uh, 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 no matter where you're, you're based. So that's the, the journey you're on, uh, you're on with us, and to keep that focused. Uh, and, and we're here to help you achieve that goal. So just thinking again about that theme of supports and, and what supports are available in a, in, in a real way for you, uh, we're going to talk about some of those. Lawrence, you're going to touch on a couple of those in the course of, of, of the presentation. But I'm thinking about um, uh, right now helping you to get started on your, your year with us. So on the Institute website, we have a really helpful page for induction, which has lots of information specifically for you, our CAP1 students. We have a couple of videos. Um, in addition to this one, videos um, that Shane narrates here on helping you uh, get onto the, the learning hub for the first time. Um, and, uh, and lots of helpful materials. I'm thinking about the student FAQs. Laurence, you're going to talk a little bit about that, um, which are based on the experience of, of previous years, giving you all the information that, that we think you'll need to have a really su successful um, year. 
Um, finally, student feedback. Well, uh, student feedback is really important to us. And a couple of times in the course of this uh, coming academic year, we're going to reach out to you, our UCAP1 students, uh, to find out what you think um, and to get your feedback, both in surveys uh, and possibly also in focus groups as well. What we'd like to do is to encourage you to take part uh, in those exercises. Your, um, your, your opinions and your feedback is extremely important to us. What I can say, and what I hope will give you a lot of confidence, um, is when we've spoken to students, uh, CAP1 students last year, uh, their responses have been really positive about the online um, uh, education model and about their experience with, uh, with the, the Chartered Accountants Ireland support team. I think they really appreciated the flexibility that our online education model affords. Um, and the quality of the uh, material that we've produced and the interaction finally with our, our, our academic team, our lecturers. So that's going to give you a lot of confidence in the, uh, in the, the program that you're embarking on and, uh, and, and in the year ahead that you're, you're, um, you're going to be undertaking. So that's enough blather from me. Um, I'm going to um, pass on to, um, to Laura because Laura is going to focus on something that in the here and now, um, that a lot of our students are going to be very interested in, um, and that's uh, looking at our book distribution and looking at timetables. So uh, I know, Laura, you're going to uh, focus on, on some details. You're going to give us some details about book distribution um, and, 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 and on timetables and how students can get started. Thank you, Bran. Uh, just touching on timetables. So the timetables are now live on the website. Uh, these have been released for the full academic year. So you can have a look at those, pencil in some of your, your upcoming webinars and just familiarise yourself with the subjects and uh, the, the actual schedule for the year. So the first uh, webinar is the CAP1 financial accounting webinar which is the 28th of September for both NI and ROI students. You'll notice that uh, financial accounting is front-loaded uh, to accommodate the double entry uh, bookkeeping assessment uh, coming up in early pre-Christmas, sorry, just in, in early in the year. Um, so the books for uh, CAP1, so the book process has actually began. Um, some students may have received their books already. If you haven't received your books, don't, uh, don't panic. This is an ongoing process uh, which will take a number of weeks to get through. So in the first instance, I will reach out to students just to let you know to expect an email from Shanahan's. It'll be over to Shanahan's then to confirm your address. You'll see something just like it's on screen. Um, you just confirm if your details are correct or if you need to change, then please do so. Um, we would ask you to engage with this process to ensure a smooth transition and that you have your, your books in a timely manner. It's also down to the student to check um, upon receipt of the books that all books are correct and allocated as per the subjects that you're registered for. Um, if you have any queries on books, please contact textbookqueries at charteredaccountants.ie. Thank you. And thanks very much uh, indeed, Laura. And Laura, I know you're a, a particular point of contact. Your your services would be particularly relevant to our Northern Ireland students. Um, you you have uh, you you have a, a role as custodian there for our Cap One NI students in particular. So that's a role that uh, I know you'll be. Um, our students there will be in contact with you potentially uh, quite a bit in the course of, of the, the academic year. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. So um, we'll move off that then and uh, we're going to move and speak to Laurence. Laurence, um, you're the, the equivalent of Laura there for our Republic of Ireland students um, and uh, you're going to, uh, to talk to us a little bit about this, the, the supports that are available for our Cap 1 students. Yes, thank you, Brian. Um, as the uh, CAP1 coordinator, student executive, I'm here really as your first point of contact um, to provide answers. If you have any questions regarding course content and delivery, I work closely with Shane on the Learning Hub to provide uh, 
multitudes of recordings and documents and you will see there is quite a lot there so you might have questions about how to find stuff if you're lost if you have any queries you can contact me the best way is on cap1 at chartered accountants but you'll see me appearing as well in the announcements i will be sending you reminders from the learning hub reminders about webinars coming up and how to register i will also be sending you announcements when we upload the recordings for the live webinars for example and the documentation supporting those webinars um, we record our webinars and upload them to the learning hub uh, to one to two days after after the webinar itself so i'll send you little reminders you'll get to know me quite extensively over the course of the academic year uh, but i'm here to help so if you have any questions um cap one at chartered accountant um, i'll also be keeping an eye on the discussion forums uh, Shane will touch on that in a little while on the Learning Hub, um, a platform where you'll be able to ask questions that, um, directly to your lecturing team. And um, But I'll keep an eye on that. Sometimes you find it's a good way to ask questions about where to find exams and so on. Um, so yes, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Don't hesitate to contact me. Charles, thanks very much uh, in, indeed. Um, and I know those discussion forums are something we're really um, keen to uh, emphasize because it's a great way to connect uh, the students with us if they have any sort of academic questions. It's a great way to connect directly with our, 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 our lecturing team, our academic team. But in the same way, uh, staying connected with the institute and the, the educator with all reams of questions, um, a great way is, is through through email. And also looking at the the, the, the student FAQs, there must be I think 80 F, uh, questions that we've put together to try and anticipate the the, the, the questions the students are going to have. Two of them in particular, uh, Lawrence, you've mentioned before, uh, getting the getting started um, student FAQ category, and then uh, the other one for uh, getting started on the learning hub. They'll be particularly um, uh, of use to students at this time of year. Um, so so um, just to, to, to flag those and thanks for all your, your work. Thanks in advance uh, for all your work connecting us with our, our CAP1 students. Um, so over to Leo then. Uh, Leo Norris, um, Head of Faculty with Chartered Accountants Ireland. Uh, you're uh, you're gonna talk a little bit about setting the scene for what, what a successful student will do and also maybe touching a little bit on our online education model uh, that students that will become very familiar very quickly to our students. But just talk us through then a little bit about uh, about what the the, uh, the successful student will do and, and your your advice to them over the the months ahead. Sure, thanks, Brian. And I suppose first of all, I just want to say you know it's great to have so many people tuning into this. Uh, I think it's it's very useful. So. Um, uh, I, I'm head of education delivery here, and I suppose my main role here is really to, to, to drive that engagement with our education. And I just want to give you a bit of a sense of that. So as you know, for our education for 2022-23, it will be completely online, aside from a small number of face-to-face -face events, which we'll be running. So online education, you know, I have to say this is great for you. It's great for students. What we've learned over the last number of years is that it really works well. It offers flexibility for students. And it offers them a balance between when they're working, other aspects of their life, and when they're study, and they can do that at different times that suit them. We also see that the pass rates are really, really good um, after this online delivery. And we get great feedback from it from our, from our student surveys, from our focus groups, and indeed conversations I've had uh, with students. And I guess students particularly know things that they really like are the short-sized videos before webinars. They really like the webinars themselves where they can engage with the lecturers and also the different milestones throughout the year particularly let's say the knowledge checks so what i'd say is you know that's that's a real positive note to start with uh, and you know i know i'm talking to a really motivated group of people here um, uh, and what i want to say is just i suppose with that positive note to just have a caveat to that around online learning and a very i suppose important message i want to say to you on here today and that is that, you know, a huge aspect of education and learning in general, you know, but particularly online, is the importance of you owning your learning journey, you know, really taking ownership to that journey to success. And I can't really highlight that enough. But maybe I'm just going to, you know, create a little bit of picture of what I mean by that. Well, I suppose to put it very simply, 
what is this all about for you for cap one put it bluntly it's about getting your exam so you want to do everything that's going to put you in the best possible position to get your exam and i want to talk to you a little bit about that today so let's have a think about what that journey looks like that journey to success that journey to getting that exam so let's say you know let's have a think about that plan that you want to have in your place and i'm just going to talk about two parts of that plan the first part of that plan is your timetable and your learning hub. Shane Burke will be talking about the learning hub in a little moment. But that's your first plan. You know you have to engage with your timetable and go to your webinars. And then looking at the learning hub, you'll see what's the content you have to cover in advance of the webinar. The second part of that plan is around your self-study. So I'm going to talk about that quite a bit in a moment. Let's just go back then again to that piece around our timetable and our learning hub. So your CAP1 course, well, that's going to be a blend of pre-recorded videos, all in nice, nice short bite-sized piece, pieces, which you can watch at any time. And then webinars, which you attend live, and you can engage with the lecturers. So I can't really highlight enough how important those pre-recorded videos are to be watched before you go to the webinar. You know, really, what you will get out of the webinar if you don't watch those is quite minimal, to be honest with you. So the message there, make sure you watch your pre-recordings and maybe any questions that need to be done in advance of the webinars. But then on the webinars, what's this? It's your fur that further applica application of all that piece of content you've gone through in your videos. And then that opportunity for you to engage there, see maybe what work you've taken on beforehand and then the lecturer going through it. And indeed, your opportunity to ask questions of the lecturer and a support lecturer that we have on there as well. Post your webinar, we will have small amounts of home study that you can take on after that. So let's just have a think about that. So for CAP1 students, your first webinar is Wednesday the 28th of September. It's at six o'clock and it's for two hours. It's in financial reporting and it's called Introduction to Basic Principles of Accounting and DBK. So if you go to your webinar, before that, you've got your learning hub and you will see what do I need to do before that. Okay, well, you have about 40 minutes of pre recorded videos. That's a pretty manageable amount, I think, starting off. And you have to watch that 40 minutes, engage with it, understand what's gone on through there before you go to your webinar. And there'll be a couple of small stepping stone questions to take on as well as that. What's that going to do? It's put, going to put you in the best possible place to get the most out of your webinar. And remember, your time is really important. So you want to maximize what you get out of your time. I'll talk about that a little bit in a moment. So that's the first part of your plan that key element to your success, the timetable, and the learning hub. The second part for you is, when are you going to watch and practice? When are you gonna watch these pre-recordings? When are you gonna practice questions? And I want you to ask yourself, when do you study best? What time do you have availability? Remember, time is so important to you. The moment you're gonna be working, you're studying, you have your social life, your hobbies, whatever it is, so when you're studying, think to yourself, am I using my time in the best way possible? If you're not doing something that's going to maximize success in your exam, just stop doing it. And by the way, usually if you're reading, that's not studying. So what I'd say to you there is start setting yourself time maximums. So if, up until now, you've said, oh, I'm going to do two hours of study. I'm going to do three hours of study. Forget about that. Say, I've got 40 minutes and I have to cover this topic. Then I'm going to take a break. Maybe you'll do another but set yourself those maximums. Our brains work much better, much more efficiently when you set a time maximum. After you've done that 40 minutes, maybe it's two 40 minute slots, make sure you've got a reward for yourself. It can be as simple as a cup of tea and a biscuit, or maybe it's going to watch a movie or whatever it is. But make sure you've got that little reward. And then really, really important is practicing questions. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of practice, practice, practice questions, and make sure to do them without the solution. If you can't stop yourself looking at the solution, give it to a friend and tell them, take that out of the room and don't give it to me until I've finished. And remember, and I suppose it took me a long time to understand this as a student and indeed as a lecturer, mistakes are great. Make as many mistakes as you want. All that matters that day of the exam, of course, you want to minimize them. But if we take on questions with that mind of, I'm going to give this a go, even when I'm not ready, our learning curve goes up just exponentially. We are putting ourselves in a position to really think about what we're doing and to take it on. So try and you know, put aside that worry about whether I'm getting it wrong or right, just take it on. So I suppose 
you know, that's giving you maybe hopefully a little bit of a jolt. What's ahead of you? What do I want to take on? The good news is here is that all our recordings are in bite-sized chunks. You can watch them when you want and when works best for you, as I mentioned already. There's also a huge amount of support. You've seen the team that's on here today. And as well as the support team here, we have, and I'm proud to say, the best education delivery team in the country. There I say even beyond that. We have the best lecturers there, and they are there with one aim, to make sure you have the best opportunity to pass your exam. You have a really um, easy to use learning hub there. Shane will be bringing it through to you you through it in a moment it really clearly shows what's all the stepping stones you have to take on to what succeed in your exam and all that content that's in there that's really really been um, i suppose rationalized to make sure you have the best opportunity to pass your exam there's also ca support you can see that on the, on the website they're a great team there for anyone that's finding it just you know challenging at a time maybe stress between work or study or whatever it is, which we all do at different times. You've got CASI and the different CASI regions, and you've also got the discussion forums, which we were talking about earlier and Laurence was referring to. And I cannot emphasize enough how much you can get out of those. There's lecturers there who are there to come back to you and help you with any of the challenges you, you may have. And um, there'll also be an, an excellent article going out, um, which I would really encourage you to engage with. And I suppose the other support I would just really say to you to really you know, use is your friends, your colleagues. So the other people that are doing the CAT1 exams. And if you haven't you know, got that colleague piece going, make sure to do that. They're the people that you're gonna be able to lean on later in the year when you're not sure, well, am I doing too much on that topic? Or, well, I'm finding that really difficult. Oh, you are too. Or even better, maybe go to somebody that's in CAT2 now, that's done the CAT1 exams. Have a chat with them. They might have some nice, um, points for you are, are, are tips. What I will say to you, whenever you are picking out people to chat to, make sure they're positive people. Make sure they're can-do people. Okay, I'm not going to take you uh, much much more of your time here. I'm just going to remind you again of that plan we spoke about. You know, your timetable and your learning hub, and then that second part of the plan is when are you going to study? And I'd encourage you maybe today to write that down. Is this something you're going to do at lunchtime? Is it something you're going to put aside on a Saturday? When works best for you? Uh, you know, set that goal. A goal, you know, without a plan, you know, it's just a wish. So make sure you have that written down. When are you going to have that plan to succeed in that goal? So um, I really want to wish you all the best uh, to achieve success in your in your CAP1 exams and all the wonderful things that go with that. Um, and I suppose the last thing I'll just say to you before I leave is, you know, to make a decision. If you haven't made that decision already, I'd be making it here today while you're listening to this. And this decision is, I'm going to get my CAP1 exams, and that is it, and nothing's going to stop me. Now, that might seem a very you know, easy thing to say, but actually it's a very powerful thing to say. When we make a clear decision that we're going to achieve something, we will do all the things that it needs to be done to make that happen. So make that decision here today. You're going to get your CAP1 exams, and any steps you need to take to achieve it, you're going to make happen. Thanks very much for your time. And thanks very much in, indeed, uh, Leo. Uh, very taken by some of the points um, that that you've you've gone over there. Uh, one of which was, um, you know, this idea that online education really is different, and it's, it's something new for new Cap One students coming in here that maybe come from college um, in much more of a face-to-face -face, um, scenario, or where um, you know there were full-time students. That's simply not the case here for for for, for Cap One students, uh, and we understand that. Um, it does present a different set of, of challenges, doesn't it? One of which is kind of that responsibility point that that um, I know you've you've touched on there. Yeah, there is a responsibility piece, and look. Dare I say, maybe that's even heightened right now because of you know the fact that a lot of education changed during COVID, you know, and that's something that we really have to step up there and take that. Yeah, you've, you've now kind of made a decision. You're going to work and study, and there is a responsibility on yourself there to really take that on and say, I'm going to make this happen, and how am I going to make it happen? So yeah, I wouldn't, I couldn't encourage that enough. And that's back to that piece of owning your journey. And, you know, maybe alluding to a piece I said before, you know yourself, what was the journey you took to get here? And let's say if, if, you, if in your college courses, you did some uh, courses where maybe you didn't have to do as much um, full exams at the end of the year, accept that and go, that's okay. I know that that's a piece I have to bring up a level. So what's that mean? I'm gonna take on more full exam uh, papers. 
and I'm going to make sure we've got online exams. I'm going to make sure to really get comfortable with the online platform and we've loads of supports there, which we can refer to later. Thanks. Yeah, the other thing that, that 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 I'm aware of is that we have we've now built up a couple of years of, of experience in, in exclusively online education, particularly looking at last year. Shane may touch on this this a little bit, but the picture that's that's forming is uh, one of where we can we can look carefully at the successful students and the behaviour of the successful students. Um, one of those is early engagement. Yeah, yeah. People that start off in that right direction, really, um, their likelihood of succeeding in an exam is, is really heightened. So. The analysis you mentioned there is we were able to do a correlation between you know those that succeeded in their exams and what did they do during the year and we can see they engaged with their content on the hub and their webinars and so forth but as you say those that engaged early on were much more likely to continue so I suppose a phrase there start as you mean to continue uh, and you know put that down for yourself now this is the time I'm going to put aside for study sure sometimes work will be busy you need to let your boss know here, I'm also studying as well, or I have a social life, but maybe I have to decide, well, this evening I have to do this instead. But really start it now. If, if you're thinking about that exam way off in the distance, I'd kind of remove that thought. It kind of comes to you much quicker than you think. And the other thing about study is there's only one thing, you know, worse than studying, and that's thinking about it. Uh, and I found that myself, and it took me a long time to understand that. Thinking about study is horrible. Study in itself, okay, it might always be wonderful, but it's not near as bad as thinking about it or putting it off. Very true. Very true indeed. Leo, thanks very much indeed um, for, for that. I'm, I know our Kaplan students will find that uh, enormously useful. Um, over to Shane Burke then. Shane is going to take us through all things Learning Hub. Um, it's, it's really the nuts and bolts of what you're going to be um, involved in over the next couple of weeks. It's, it's that combination of the two things about our, our online education model. So what's that about? Well, it's about uh, the online uh, on-demand content, which is, which is there in terms of the, the learning principles. It's uh, our videos and all the material that's up on our platform, the Learning Hub, combined with the, the live webinar, um, which is extremely important, that live element. So it's those two elements coming together, specifically, specifically focused on the, the Learning Hub and getting you started. Uh, Shane, you might talk us through that. Thanks indeed. Yeah, thanks, Brian. So I will be going through just a couple of slides and then we'll be jumping onto the Learning Hub itself so that you can see uh, the Learning Hub itself and you can get an idea of how all of our sessions are, are structured. So very briefly, just going through a couple of slides about logging into the Learning Hub, how you register for webinars, and then, like I said, we'll be jumping into the hub itself. So first things first, logging into the Learning Hub. So you can log in directly to the Learning Hub using this link here, students.chartedaccountants.ie. You'll be asked to uh, log in using your username, which is your Chartered Accountants or student ID, and your password is your date of birth in a year, year, month, month, day, day, exclamation mark format. So we have an example here. So our student here uh, was born on the 13th of September, 1996. So their username is 12345 in this example. And the password is 19960913 and the exclamation mark. That part at the very end is really important because if you just put in the, the numbers, it's not the correct password. So you won't be able to log in. So just remember that year, year, month, month, day, day, and exclamation mark at the end. Very briefly, just talking about webinars now. I know Leo has discussed this in a good bit, but just a reminder that our webinars will cover multiple sessions. And you can see what is required preparation for the webinars on your timetable, on your learning hub, on the calendar events, on the reminders that Laurence will send you as well. So you're going to be getting lots of reminders about when these webinars are taking place, and what do you actually need to do to be prepared. As Leo said, our lecturers are working through questions rather than going through slides. So you really need to have looked at the recordings or the preparation to make the most out of your, uh, your webinars. We've got a presenting lecturer who'll be going through the questions and then you've got the support lecturer who's going through those questions that are coming through on the chat. So it's really, really interactive. We normally have about somewhere between 60 and 100 questions coming in through the chat during the two hours of the webinar. So it's a great place to ask your questions related to that particular topic. Last part about the webinars is just when you're registering for the webinars, please make sure you're using the registered uh, email address that is currently associated with the Chartered Accountants Ireland website. Uh, we had a couple of students last year who were using their own personal email address, the one that was different from the registered email address, and that throws off our attendance tracking, um, which is relevant for 
firms, if you're in one of the big firms, they do track your attendance for webinars. So it is important that you're using the correct email address so we can actually uh, show that, yes, you had attended this one even, uh, you know, just in case you're, you're thinking of using your own, um, a different email address to register. The last thing then just on communication, really, uh, Laurence had touched on it that you will be getting reminders from the Learning Hub. The email that you want to look out for is this one, no reply at students.charteraccountants.ie. You'll also get a daily digest from the relevant discussion forums that you might have subscribed to. So anytime there's a new post from your lecturers or your lecturer has responded to a question that you've asked or maybe another student has got back to you, you'll get a daily digest of uh, those forum posts into your email but it's also where all the announcements from the Learning Hub come from as well. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're just going to jump over to the Learning Hub itself. So just bear with me as I just change my screen. Okay, so here we have now um, logged into the Learning Hub and we are on the dashboard page here. So what you can see straight away at the very top of this page is there's alerts here. So at the moment it's just saying welcome to the, the Learning Hub, but we use this section here for alerting students to any uh, upcoming maintenance or if we know there's an outage going on or we expect something to, to happen as relevant to all students. So that's where you'll see that information. Below it then you'll see your enrolled courses. So in this example, this student is only registered for CAP 1 Financial Accounting and CAP 2 Financial Reporting. If when you hover over each of the course sections, you can see you, there's a progress bar. In this example, I've not engaged in any of the content on either of these, so I'm showing a 0% complete, but as you work your way through, that progress bar will update throughout the academic year, and as you are looking at the slides, the recordings, and, and so on. If we scroll down the page then, we can see the upcoming events section. So this is one place that you can see your upcoming webinars. So this section will only show you about two to three weeks in advance. So it's not gonna show all webinars or all uh, reminders that are coming down the line. It's just, uh, I suppose, an easy, um, an easy reminder of what's, what's coming up in the next few weeks. You can click into that as well, and it'll bring you to the actual event itself, so you can look at it in more detail. And then down below, you've got your bookmarks. So almost every item of content in the Learning Hub can be bookmarked. It's really, really simple. You just have to click on the little star icon, and we'll take a look at that when we look at the course, and it shows up here in your bookmarks section. So instead of having to go back into the course, if there's a really really interesting recording or there's a really challenging question that you want to get back to, you can just bookmark that and then you can just get straight into it from the bookmark section itself. Let's take a look though at the financial accounting course. So we just click on it and we are into the financial accounting course. On the top here, we have a quick summary of what's involved in the course. You've got your progress bar and the number of activities in this particular course. So as we, we saw before, I've done nothing on this course, so I'm showing up a zero, but as you as you start clicking into slides and looking at recordings, that progress bar will start to update. Each course is set up in the exact same format. So once you uh, understand how this uh, format works for say financial accounting, it's the same for tax, for law, for management accounting, for CAP2, for SFMA. You start off with a quick introduction to the course itself. So this is just uh, high level information that's related to capital and financial accounting. In this example, we've got our announcements, we've got the induction recording, the competency statements, the, the solutions to some of the challenging questions, and the discussion form itself. On the top right here, you can see the latest announcements. So again, if Laurence is sending you out any uh, important information related to cap one, this is where you can see it, and it'll also be in your email as well. As we scroll down then, we can open and close or expand all of the, the sessions on this course. So here I have opened up session one, and straight away you can see it's the title of the session, but it also gives us an indication of how long it's gonna to take to look at these recordings. So as Leah mentioned, session one is 40 minutes, so that's how long it's gonna take you to get through those recordings. You get a quick summary of what's in this session, you get a, the learning objectives for the session, and you also get the required preparation. So this is where you'll see where do I need to be reading in the textbook, what chapters, what pages, that kind of thing. Um, and that's the same for every session. As you scroll down then, you start to see the actual content of the session. So we start off with the Learn Journal, which is a key document for every single session. It goes into more detail of what is covered in this session, why it's relevant, and how it maps back to the competency statement. The competency statement is obviously what is examinable at the CAP 1 or CAP 2 or FE level. You then have your slides and then you've got your micro learning sessions as well. So these are just short recordings so here. You can see it's two minutes, four minutes, five minutes. So you know it's how long it's going to take you to get through that. 
uh, here I have bookmarked uh, an item, so that was what was showing up on the dashboard. I can just click on the star icon and it's bookmarked and I can just unclick it. As you progress through and you're looking at the recordings, these half circles will start to be uh, marked with a tick so you know that you've already completed this item. Then we've got our question packs and our solutions, which are only available once you've actually looked at the question packs. Then we have our knowledge checks, which are a great way to just summarize what you've learned in this session. And then we have a link to the discussion forum. So the discussion forums are a great place to ask questions of your lecturers and also your fellow students as well. So you can respond to a student's question or the lecturer might get back to you. Uh, our lecturers are, are pretty good at uh, managing the discussion form at this point, so you should expect a fairly speedy response in a day or so, um, and you'll get that response into your email. The next section below it in this example on this course is the webinar section. So here we can see it's telling us what is actually covered in this session. Uh, so it's session one, the required preparation. So look at the Learn Journal, watch all the recordings, the information about when this is on, what time it takes place, and then who are the two lectures? So Brian is your main lecturer, your presenter, and Keen is the support lecturer who will be in the chat answering your questions. You then also have the webinar link as well. So if we click on this, it brings us to this registration page over here. And then this is an important piece. So students aren't automatically registered for every webinar. So you'll need to do this for every upcoming webinar. Put in your name, your last name, your email address, confirmation that you're using the correct email address, student number and firm if you are in a firm. Um, once you register for a webinar, you will get a reminder email from the GoToWebinar platform, which is the software we use 24 hours before the webinar and also one hour before the webinar takes place. So you're going to be getting lots of reminders about what is in the webinar, how to prepare for that webinar, and also when that webinar is taking place, as well as the link to that webinar. So you'll, you know, um, you'll be you're well versed in, in how to access the webinars after maybe your first or second webinar takes place. So that's everything then from me. I'll stop sharing my screen now and I will pass you over to Gareth unless Brian, you have any comments there? None from me, yeah, we'll pass you straight over to, to Gareth. Thanks very much, Shane. Thanks, Brian, thanks, Shane. Um, Gareth Mulvin here again, folks, and I work in the exam department and I'm happy to give you a little overview of, of exams and more importantly, some steps to guide you as you work your way through hopefully exam success in, in May next year. First and foremost, the good news is the exam process is very, very fair. Pass rates are very good and there's no mystery involved. The examiner wants you to do well. I can guarantee you those marking your scripts want you to do well and really it's over to you. We're here talking in September 2022 and as, as, the, pre, as the guys have touched upon previously, there's loads of time for you to make a start, make a start early, and just demonstrate on exam day what you've learned. More about that very, very shortly. Your exams are three hour exams in May of next year. They're closed book exams, meaning you can't bring any notes or books with you. Now you're going to hear two buzzwords around the whole exam process. One is Cirrus. So your exams will be taken by way of e-assessment. Cirrus is the platform which is web-based and which you take your exam. So basically you type your answer into a platform called Cirrus. You type your response in there, it keeps a record of your, your answers, your whole exam script. You'll be able to see the exam paper there and that's Cirrus, which you'll get familiar with very, very quickly, I've no doubt. The other is ProctorU. So in this era of no exam holes, exams now being done online, the assessment, we need a monitoring team, invigilation team. So our invigilation team is ProctorU. They use your webcam and some artificial intelligence and they're supported by our staff here in Chartered Accountants Ireland, just to make sure that everything is going smoothly for your exam. Probably the most important thing I'm going to say is what's, our, what's been touched upon already. Preparation starts now. We've seen over the years that there's a huge correlation between those who start the preparation early when I say early, I'm talking about September, October time, not early next year, and exam success. So look, your exam is eight months away, but you need that time. Many of you are working, you've busy socialized, family lives, life gets busy, and the best study intentions don't always get acted upon. So for many of you I know after Christmas, busy season will start, study will fall by the wayside, all of a sudden it'll be Easter, and your exams will be knocking at the door. So I can't stress, guys, pace yourself, take the eight months that you have at your disposal, 
access to resources shane has been talking about use the other tips that the that the previous speakers have been talking about but your preparation starts now so exam success you all want it yes you need knowledge knowledge at the top of the slide there is subject knowledge i know you're going to access the learning hub i know you're going to going to know all about your management accounting your financial accounting your tax or whatever it may be but bear in mind these are professional exams so exam technique is a big part of what you need to pass your exam and exam technique like your subject knowledge starts now it starts early so on the learning hub as shane mentioned you have practice questions now a lot of these questions are past exam questions they're valuable questions don't just read a book don't just look at your webinar get to the questions as quickly as possible ultimately your exam is a practical test it's you three hours and doing questions so get to the questions as quickly as possible also when you're doing those questions i suggest you use word you type your answers you don't use a pen and paper the word is a very very similar experience to what you will have in your exam day when you're typing your answers onto the serious platform also at your disposal for each of your cap one subjects you'll have sample papers and solutions you won't have all the past exam questions and answers at your disposal not all of them what you do have however are four complete sample papers and sample solutions this will be one of your primary uh, study tools and i suggest like everything else you take it in your stride but you get to it sooner rather than later the lectures of course as part of education delivery will help you along the way with those should you have any queries as i said above folks a big part of passing the exam isn't just knowledge it's not just practicing those questions and working your way through the sample papers it's technique these are professional exams you're not going to get 100 percent you're not going to have your exam done with half an hour to spare if you do there's something wrong most likely so technique is a big big part of you passing your exam you ensuring you're, you're successful so i've written down their approach what's meant by approach well we could talk about for example what question you're going to do first are you ready to choose or to even know what your best question is are you ready to leave a question when you know your allotted time has elapsed that there's a skill in that a lot of people struggle with it and if you do struggle with it it might come back to bite you so be prepared to leave a question when the allocated time has elapsed it may come as a surprise to you also to note that most people who pass these exams don't get the don't get the correct question when it comes to computational asks so your workings are key be prepared to show good workings even if they're not perfect even if they're not as you did in your practice questions know what you need to do produce well labeled workings supporting your final calculation if you have this technique prepared folks starting now in time for may it significantly increases your chances of exam success the good news is you have a mock exam towards the end of the academic cycle the mock exam is a hugely valuable learning tool not only do you take it on the exam platform on cirrus you get feedback debrief from your lecturing team there's a strong link we've seen from our data there's a strong link between those attempting the mock exam in a proper fashion three hours attempting all the questions good exam technique and those passing the exam now the good news is that prior to the mock exam one of your sample papers will also be available on cirrus and we call that the practice paper so you do have a chance to get used to the functionality of working your way through an exam paper on Cirrus and making sure you're very comfortable with it prior to the exams in May. Any questions on any of this, of course, you can contact us in exams or in the education delivery team. We'll get a good response out to you. And I know in the meantime, we'll have plenty of correspondence going to you in good time, telling you about all of these, all of these study tools at your disposal. And look, if you don't believe me, if you don't want to listen to me, that's fine but listen to your examiner and how do you listen to your examiner well you have several ways to do so and one of those is the PEC report so the PEC report there's one for cap one after every exam sitting and it's published along with the cap one results and it's available on our website now the good news is the examiner sets out what students have done well what students have done badly so you can by reading those in good time by being prepared you can eliminate a lot of the common weaknesses that students have in the exam 
they're an invaluable part of your study journey and maybe that's something you'll access later on closer to exam time. Secondly, we have the bottom line. The bottom line is a student magazine and on there the examiner puts on some exam related articles and also me and my colleagues in the exam department, we also include articles there relevant to your exams in CAP 1 closer to the time. So that's everything from me folks. I hope you found it useful. The one parting tip I'll leave you with is, and it's been touched upon already, and I'm going to say it again because it is that important, engage early. Don't leave it till after Christmas. Don't put it on the long finger. Get going early and you'll be in good shape come your exams in the summer, I've no doubt. So best of luck and I'll pass back over to you, Brian. Gareth, while we still have you on screen and um, and we can still we still have you, thanks very much indeed for for that. Um, the message coming through loud and clear, Garrett, engage early and use the the resources available, particularly that practice paper which gives students um, when it's available it, it, through the academic year, it gives students a real practical use of that exam platform which we call Cirrus. Really important uh, coming through loud and clear from 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 your presentation. Um, one other thing, I suppose, and, and you're going to hear a lot of jargon. You, you mentioned two things about Cirrus and your, your Proctor U, but the thing about CAP 1 exams as well, yes, we have summer exams, but for those students of financial accounting and law, um, there's, uh, there's other assessments that are going to be coming down a little bit sooner uh, and which can often have a, a focus for, for students. So again, a lot of jargon there around exam windows. Uh, what, what does DBK mean? Um, double entry bookkeeping. There'll be lots of talk around that. So for me, it would be advising students to uh, not to be put off by that, but to have a look at the website. We have a page there under the exam section of the website specifically for CAP 1. And um, even at this stage to get start to get used to, um, you know, the sequence of things for, for exams for specifically for, for CAP 1. Absolutely, Brian. And can I add that the DBK, which I know you will, students will receive correspondence regarding it sets you up nicely for the rest of your CAP 1 financial accounting studies. It's not just an interim assessment, it's a platform, it's a real leg up for the students to ensure that you're in good shape for the rest of your financial accounting journey. Spot on, thanks very much indeed. And if students have any questions, even at this stage in relation to, um, to, to CAP 1 exams, we have a mailbox there specifically uh, to deal with, um, with exam queries, CAP 1 exam, exam singular, CAP 1 exam at charteredaccountants.ie and uh, the team there would, would be only too happy to, to help and support with any queries that students might have even, even at this stage. Absolutely. Gareth, thanks very much indeed. Um, that largely brings uh, our presentation today and our video today uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to a finish. Uh, as we all join again uh, together on screen, uh, I'd just like to thank all of our presenters uh, today um, uh, for, for your input. As I said at the start, the uh, key to this will be support. The key theme of, of today's presentation is going to be support. So uh, we hope that uh, this this came through loud and clear in our presentation today. That, that support is ongoing, so I particularly see Laura and Laurence here who will be very much on the ground dealing with, 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 all, with all the queries. Uh, so I'd just like to wish all CAP1 students uh, who are viewing this or, or otherwise uh, every success in the, the year ahead. We are here to support you. Uh, while it, it, it's, it may not be a walk in the park for everyone, we know it's going to be very challenging and extremely rewarding. We'd like to wish you every success. Thank you for watching and uh, we've closed it out. Thanks for having us. Bye-bye.